G'day, it's Bill from Sidereal Trading here. Most of the stuff we make and sell here is for astrophotography, but that's not all we do. We also operate at the other end of the scale. You might already have seen some of our work, including the Wii Macro Rail for macro photography, uh, but this time we're looking at microscopy and microphotography. Now for a lot of our clients, there's a good chance that you've got a halfway decent microscope already. What we're going to do here is to show you how to put a camera on a standard microscope and get some images on your computer. We've got a few types of microscopes here. There's two biological types uh, where the subject is on a slide. Um, we've got some slides. Um, we've also got a stereo microscope and our subject here is Diego's favourite bug. The useless weevil. Now this is a TubeTech SCAR0521C camera and it's built especially for a microscope. It's a fairly basic camera, it's not super expensive and we'll be using it to get images on these microscopes. The reason why I say it's built especially for a microscope is its body is the same diameter as a standard small microscope eyepiece. That way you can remove the eyepiece and just slot the camera in instead. Now here's the part that goes in the, the eyepiece holder. Um, it's 23.2 millimeters wide. If your microscope's got eyepieces larger than this, you're going to need an adapter like this one. I'll be needing this adapter for one of the microscopes. I think that one, and it just goes in like that. Now, astrophotographers like to talk endlessly about the details of their sensors in their cameras. For this one, it's not quite so important, but the physical size of the sensor does affect the field of view. And that, that is how much of the slide or the specimen you're going to be able to see on the computer. This sensor is 5.7 by 4.3 millimeters, and we'll see what that gets us shortly. The other thing that's important is the number of uh, pixels you get, megapixels. This one's 5.1 megapixels, and that is four HD computer monitors. What that means is you can zoom in digitally a reasonable way without your image starting to pixelate. Oh, incidentally, the software that you need to connect to the camera and adjust all the images is included on a stick, not that one, with the camera. Let's get the camera connected to the computer. Here's the cable to the computer. The camera takes a mini USB-B connector and it's USB 2. Now, USB 2 won't give us the same frame rates as USB 3, but it's more reliable over uh, a longer cable. I found that typical frame rates that I get are about 15, maybe 20, uh, 20 per second, which is plenty. Right, now the camera's connected. Let's start getting images. Click on there. That's going to go order yes. Now we'll start to flicker, so I'll just click on that and get about 20. There you go. Because there's no lens on the camera, we're not going to see an image yet, but we can tell the camera's working by putting my hand over it. As you can see, it goes dark. We'll, uh, so we're getting data from the camera. So let's go stick it into a microscope. Okay. Let's have a look at the first microscope. It's a fairly basic biological microscope, and I've got a slide on the stage borrowed from my science teacher wife. To get the camera onto the microscope, you have to remove the eyepiece. Uh, with this particular model, you have to remove a screw, which I've already done. So pop that out. Now, now we can see the microscope. Uh, it's the standard 23.2, meaning the camera will just drop into the eyepiece holder. You can see, immediately, we've got a an image on the computer screen, you'll probably have to focus it a little, um, as you can see there. It's not too bad. From this point, you can play around with the exposure, contrast, color balance, and all the other video settings until you're happy with your image. The computer saves images on its hard drive, um, and I'll save a few images here for the video. Sticking with the biological microscopes, this one is a more advanced model and it's got a trinocular head. This means you can use the eyepieces while the camera is going as well. This would be a great way to make a presentation or a demonstration to a class for teaching. To get the camera into the trinocular, there's an adapter. Of course, there's an adapter. 
This one allows you to focus both the camera and the eyepieces at the same time. The diameter of the trinocular and the diameter of the adapter are all the standard 23.2 millimeters, so we don't need any other adapter. Drop that in there, Let's see if we get an image. Now you might need to adjust the beam splitter on the trinocular. This microscope, you have to pull the lever outwards. Uh, if you don't, no light's going to get to the camera. Now, if you move, you can move the specimen around. Let's have a look. There we go. We can move it around. Pretty cool. Uh, and you can focus it. Uh, I think we're pretty much in focus anyway. It'll look better on the screen in a second. And you can make adjustments, the video adjustments as before. Our final microscope is a stereo model. These are more about large specimens and you can use them for dissecting. Kids love them because you can stick your finger underneath and get a good close look. It's very similar to before, but this time we're going to need the 30.5mm adapter for the camera because that's the diameter of the eyepiece on this microscope. Again, we need to remove the locking screw to get the eyepiece out, but I've already done that. Uh, so the eyepiece just lifts out like that. The adapter just drops in there, and the camera goes straight into there, and hopefully that gets something on the screen. There's our useless boat. As before, we can see the subject on the computer screen, and all you need to do is frame it, fit it with the focus, the exposure, and all that sort of stuff. If you got really clever, you could probably use this setup with two identical cameras to generate a 3D image of the specimen. Um, this would be good for presentations or even teaching, I suppose. You'd have to do it with a pretty flat object though because the depth of focus is fairly narrow on microscopes as you can probably see there. So that's our three different microscope setups. Using a camera of the right size or with the right adapter, you can get some really cool and useful images. They're good for school projects, teaching or hobbies or just plain being geeky. The 5 megapixels means that you can do a fair amount of digital zooming and concentrate on the parts of the specimen you want to. Finally, if you're wondering how we got such detailed and deeply focused images of Diego's Euphilus Weevil, that's an entirely different setup using a Wii Macro Rail. I've talked about this in other videos and blogs, and I'll attach a link in the notes. I think that's probably all I need to say about this particular Tech microscope camera. You can find it and some others on our website, and I'll put up a link here. If you like this video, have a look at some other ones. They're on the Sidereal Trading YouTube channel. Like, rate, comment, you know you want to. I'm Bill from Sidereal Trading, and we'll see you next time. The Euphilus Weevil. <laughs>